Hi, hello, welcome back to... It, is that what I think it is? No, it can't be. Is that... Is that... What the base? Yeah, welcome back to What the Base. Um, in the last episode, we went ahead and made this jewel right here, which I am very happy with. I think it's pretty fun, pretty decent. We got like the little guys that kind of go out. That's, oh my God, I forgot about the Statue of Liberty. Something that you guys let me know about in the comments, I saw quite a few comments about this, is the fact that this guy, I didn't need to make that the robot because apparently if I place down an options trigger, wherever that is, and go to edit, there should be unlink dual gravity. I didn't know that was, I, how did I not know that was a thing, dude? Oh my God. God. It means I don't need to do this as a robot, so I want to give that a go real quick. All right, so I went ahead and tweaked the gameplay a little bit so it works a little bit better with two cubes. I also made this timing a little bit more forgiving because I found it really hard. I kept dying to it. And so now I think the part flows so much better and it should hopefully be a little bit easier to learn as well. So yeah, that's good. Improving the gameplay. All right, now it's time to deco. Yeah, so now the decoration. How do I want to do the deco for this part? I'm thinking, first of all, we need a way to kind of make it clear that these structures cut off. So maybe I can even add outlines here and then add some outlines down the bottom like this. So I don't want this to be like super memory focused because the rest of the level isn't very memory focused. And I don't know what I want to do for this yet, but I have an idea for some of these pillars here. This is going to be interesting. So I came up with this idea literally earlier today in the car on the way back from uni. I was like thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God. This would go so hard. Check it out. It looks really stupid there. Yeah, so rainbow blocks. You can kind of see how it works. Like the rainbow blocks flip back and forth. And then you've got this line in the middle kind of separating it that moves like that. Mm, how did I do that? Well, the answer is with a gradient trigger here. And I actually set it to invert. So if I just set it to additive, you can kind of see the effect that's going on here. Without these moving it like that, uh, it's just, you know, the white gradient. And then I set that to invert. And then that inverts the color of the rainbow blocks. So the way you do this is you just set up the rainbow blocks, of course. And then I want to half space one of these little objects here, give that a group, copy paste it over, give that a different group, copy paste that down, give that a different group, and then copy paste that down, give that a different group. Then we can set up a gradient trigger here, change this to vertex mode, of course, and put 216. Does that work? Yeah, it works. It's just behind it. So I want to set that to T2, I guess. And considering that actually has colors in the gradient, how would that work as invert? Oh, what? Oh, that looks so weird. <laughs> Oh, I'm losing my mind right now. This is... Uh, oh. Okay, this effect's about to go crazy. I'm going to set them both to 29, I think, but then set this hue, like, differently until it looks good. Also, fun fact, I didn't know until I watched, like, audio visual stream the other day. You can click this button once, and then it shows this, but then, then it turns into an HSV button, and you can click it again, and now you can edit this. Didn't know you could do that. Yeah, there's some interesting colors there, and then I can have that kind of... Do even, like, a really steep angle, like, that type of thing, and then I want to change the color of 29. That's that's a crazy effect. That's... So let me go ahead and select all of these and then I can hide those so you can't see those edges. And maybe instead of just going around the color wheel, I want to find a few good color schemes and kind of shift it to that. All right, so we've got the colors lined up where I want them with the music and now I'm going to do the tried strat. Yeah, I'm claiming this strategy. That's right. What are you going to do about it? So I'm going to copy paste these triggers just as a reference. These are like reference triggers. I'm going to give these first ones a group of 220 and make sure they're all spawn trigger, multi trigger, just like so. Then I can place a spawn trigger trigger that spawns 220 and does spawn ordered. That's important. Make sure that spawn trigger multi-trigger as well and then give that the group as well. And then I can line it up with this next reference trigger just like this. Yeah, that looks pretty lined up to me. And then I can just place that right there. Delete our reference triggers just like so. And then boom, that's our spawn loop pretty much done. Yeah, now I just need to activate that with a spawn trigger. 220 spawn ordered. Boom. Does that have a group to it? No, it does not. Okay, so something I kind of thought might have been the case in the past, but I've definitely figured out out now with the spawn ordered is that it does it at one time speed. It doesn't do it at the speed here. So I kind of need to place down like a speed portal and then work out the triggers from there. So I'm going to delete these spawn triggers. Check it out. It looks kind of neat actually. All right. So I was really happy with this block design. It turned out way better than I thought it would, but there are a couple more things I wanted to do to kind of complete it in a way. The first thing I did was add a little thicker outline below the regular outline that's black. I don't really do this that often anymore because I don't like relying on it. But in this case, I wanted to create a little bit of extra contrast, which I kind of did. I don't know, it didn't really work as well as I had hoped. So I decided to add some glow over the top of it to hopefully mellow out the colors a little bit. And after I was happy with that, it was time to copy paste it, which, oh my God. <laughs> 
Dude! Oh my god, I need to become an effect creator. I decided against using that though, for now. And instead of just blindly copy pasting, I need to copy paste with the gradient trigger selected as well, and then click build helper. And after applying that to the rest of the pillars, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. After that though, I wanted to apply some movements to the gradient just to make it feel a little bit more dynamic. And I did this by giving all of the bottom points the same group and then using an area move trigger. It took me a while to get this looking half decent, but what I ended up doing in the end, which I was really happy with, was giving it some randomness. Yeah, if you look at the area move trigger, there's a plus or minus section that's to the right of like all of the regular, I guess, inputs to the area move trigger. And this is actually completely random. So it'll randomly move them a certain amount, plus or minus two blocks. And honestly, I thought that turned out really well. I thought that looked really, really cool. Added a little bit of like unique randomness to it that you couldn't really do in 2.1. And with that, that is the pillar design finally done. Dude, it took me so long to finish this off. <laughs> yeah, I think this guy is what I want to design next. I have a little idea for what I want to do here. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I think it could be kind of cool. What if I go ahead and maybe use like one of these 2.1 blocks, right? Make one of the colors black, not that one, but make the base black and then the detail like white. Mm, yeah, it's just a few like cracks in it, which I kind of like. Also for this whole jewel, I'm not going to be relying on these pulsing colors anymore. These pulses, they're gone. I'm making new pulses, dude. There's a new part, new fresh decoration, new part, new me, bro. So that being said, let's create a new color here. Let's go like yellow or something ridiculous. Uh, maybe make that blending just like so. And then I want to like pulse that between yellow and green really fast. So you can kind of see it pulses real quick. Boom, boom, like that. And then I want to loop that. So of course I'm going to make a spawn loop. I think, can I just create loop? How does this work? Did that work? Okay, well the create loop button is pretty easy then. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's a bit boring on its own, but I do like that. I do think that's neat. So my only problem now is that I don't think there's any slopes for that. If I do like that with the warp tool and then just chuck that over, would that look really weird? <laughs> you can see there's a very clear line there, but that's not too big of a deal because I want to put something over this as well anyway. This might be over detailed, but what if I use some of these? I haven't touched the pixel blocks yet, by the way. I probably should because I've used it in the previous parts, but we'll see. We'll see. If I use this and then put the main color on black blending, it'll just be these outside bits. So if I chuck those on top, no, nah, I don't think that's going to work. I need something pulsing on top. Something like boof, boof, boof. Maybe I can just go these blocks. Honestly, these ones might work. They're very basic, but I feel like that's what I need is like a pulsing thing that goes over it. So let's set those to background blending. Looks kind of odd now, but if I pulse those in the right way, I think that could look nice. So let's select that. Let's give that a group of 257 and pulse that maybe even just HSV of the background, like shift the hue a little bit down, saturation down a bunch and brightness up a bunch. Even if I double it up, that kind of looks sick. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Okay. And now I can kind of extend that design more or less downwards. I don't know whether I want to just do this design here going down there and then over the top, I'll do this once again down here, but not in the middle. I kind of want to do that. Mm, it kind of doesn't have the same effect. So maybe I will do it there. That's a little bit much. I don't love that. But then I can go on another layer here, add some blocks over the top that are black and then like half opacity like that and make sure that's laid above everything. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, I think that looks good. I can also go ahead and do some details like adding some white glow here maybe just to kind of show the edge a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. Cool, cool. So now let me apply that design to the rest of these structures here. All right, so I've done that, but I've also gone ahead and added a bunch of pulses around the place. Man, it is so hard to talk and beat this part. But yeah, you saw the pulses there. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's nothing like too insane. With the pulses, you kind of have to just feel the music and kind of just go with how it feels. And so yeah, it's hard to like commentate over it, but I, I think the pulses turned out pretty good. Like there's a couple like really intense ones like that. That's pretty intense. Yeah, anyway, now I want to come up with a design for these block structures. These block structures, they kind of scare me a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but I think I have some ideas. What I'm kind of thinking, first of all, is maybe doing some form of design that goes around the other block like that. So I think we have a couple cases where it happens like that, right? Like, uh, not really. We could do more though. We can have more where it kind of like goes under like that. So I want to kind of utilize that a bit more. What I was thinking of doing as well, though, is if I go here to these blocks, 
blocks over here, you can kind of see that these are like outlines. They're meant for like these blocks. You can kind of build them up like this and then have like a block, but I want to just use these outlines to outline these. They're very vibrant and I do, whoa, dude, with the more intense pulses, they're cool as well. What if I make them black? Ooh, that gives a really interesting vibe. I didn't expect it to be behind. Ooh, and then have something else in the middle there, which maybe could be a pixel block. The pixel blocks, they're coming back, baby. I need the, the, I need the pixel blocks. Maybe I can use some of these and have them kind of fractured a little bit, you know? So like I just place them in there. Random rotations, give them like one of them black. Ooh, yeah. And then the other one can be like blending. Oh, yes. That looks really nice. And then I can give that, is it literally like two or one or something? The group that rotates? That's kind of neat, yeah. But these, these need a bit of separation. Maybe I can do that with some subtle glow. I'll chuck that on the 50% opacity glow and then chuck that on like T1 so it's above. Just to kind of separate those a little bit. How does that look? I think it does work. I do like it. I think it just needs a little bit. I don't know. Maybe it needs to just be used in the right place. So let me move it over here. Let's grab this block and start kind of chucking them around here. Yeah, I do like that. I, I just, these look a bit weird. So let's go to a completely new layer here, maybe over here and then use these big glow objects, put them on T2 and then I'll make them black blending by default, but then give them some new groups and kind of make those pulse around. Pulse them to white on like 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Ooh, and then what if I apply that to these as well? Yes, dude! Okay, that's what this was missing. That's what it was missing. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> ah, this is why I love creating so much. When you have that moment, like it takes a while before you like have those moments in creating where you're like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing anybody has ever built in the history of Geometry Dash. But when you get that moment, it's so cool. It's so awesome. Dude, oh my God. It almost looks like it has a bit of depth as well, which is super cool. Now, I don't want to do this same design to all of these structures because we've got quite a few of these big box structures and I don't want to like, you know, go too overboard with it, but I do definitely want to incorporate these because these designs are so cool. I'm not really sure what I want to do with the other ones. I should probably work that out though. I'm going to go something else with pixel blocks and maybe do an area trigger effect again. Okay, I have an interesting idea that I don't know if it's going to work or not. Pretty dark base, but then decently bright right other thing, right? And then what I can do is go ahead and maybe even use a more detailed one and do like a really bright, I don't know, like the complementary color like that. Yeah. And then even chuck some glow in there that's bright as well. Saturation down, brightness up type deal. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So chuck this behind so you can kind of see it there. And then what I want to do is select these, give them a group and then use an area move trigger. Do that way. And I want it to move down by just like negative 0.5. Okay, I've just added a static thing for the camera so the camera doesn't move around because it kind of had an issue with that. But you can kind of see those kind of moving down out of the way to let those peek through. I kind of like that. I think that works. Is it a bit of a weird design? Yeah, it's a little bit weird, but I think that's okay. All right, well, with that, I think that's pretty much all the block design I want to have for this part up until about here. I want to switch it up with these slopey bits, but for now, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to apply that design to everything. Woohoo. All right, so now I think it's about to, oh, wait, there's a single block here. Why did I put that single block there? What on earth am I gonna do with that, bro? I have an idea. What if I just get rid of those extra bits of glow and then just chuck you in there? Okay, now I wanna start work on some connector deco of some form, which I'm not 100% sure what I wanna do for that. I think maybe I'm gonna take some inspiration from like Shock City and, and like, I think Slay does this quite a bit as well, where you like kind of build up a half background type thing. I could actually, instead of doing it with those, I can do it with regular outlines and then just disable the hitboxes. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So I'll do something along the lines of that. And then I want to like kind of fill that out with some full, just regular colored blocks. Oh my God. There's so many pages of blocks now. That's like very in your face, right? I want to make that a lot darker. So like, yeah, even like that. I don't really love that that much. Maybe I can go ahead and like, that looks all right. Yeah. Add some more spikes here to give it a bit more symmetry. And then of course it's going to need a little bit more, maybe like some things coming out of the portal like that 
could be quite cool. So like using some of these objects, perhaps connecting those to their type thing. It's giving like laser blitz a little bit, but I think that's okay. If I give that blending, the only issue is that those overlaps will be visible. So I want to give it something that's not blending, I think. I could even give it 32. So it kind of pulses like that. Ooh, that's kind of cool, actually. Maybe I can make it a little bit darker because that's a little bit in your face. Like it'll be hard to tell whether that's foreground or background, right? You can still see the overlap a bit, but I think it's probably fine. What I could even do to fix that is use the warp tool here and then just warp it so that it's like out of the way of that. Yeah, like that. Dude, perfect. It really like, I don't know, man. It doesn't get much better than the warp tool, I, I have to say. And then I can even give these pulses going along that are the same pulsing groups as these. I don't love that because it, it kind of mellows out the colors a lot. You can't actually tell that it's like the yellow green type color, you know? All right, cool. And now for this saw blade design, what do I want to do? How would a fireball look? <laughs> it's just a fireball there. You know what? I might keep that. And then what I also want to do is have some form of other animated thing around it that is a little bit more, I guess, colorful. Like what if I do like one of these guys, scale it down, maybe make it like half speed, not randomized start. So it'll always be the same. And then I'll rotate it around twice like that. Yeah, that's cool. I really like that actually. And then what I want to do as one final little thing is I want to do a particle effect, something like that. Yeah, it kind of looks goofy with the background like pulsing here you can see that pulse there looks a bit stupid what i'm gonna do to fix that is i'm gonna make it like appear into frame about here like that, yeah. Okay, cool. So I want to extend that sort of design to a few more places here as well. I really want to use these particles, but they don't pulse with the background, which makes it really, really hard. But I just don't think there's anything I can really do about that, unfortunately. I'm just going to have to use them in places where there's not that many intense pulses, I guess. What about like here? Would it look stupid here? Because this is another place I really wanted to use it. I guess that kind of fits because that opposes it and then that like blends into it a bit more. So yeah, maybe I can get away with it. I don't know. Let's Let's see. Okay, so I've been fiddling around with these little outline bits for ages, and I think I got it looking pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. It looks nice, but oh my god, it takes so long to do. It takes an unbelievable amount of time. I think I'm gonna do Jump Orb Deco for a sec. Take a bit of a break. What if I use one of these guys? I don't think I've ever used these before. They, it looks kind of cool. I like it. And I want to do something kind of overlaying the orb a little bit, kind of on the top of the orb. I don't know what I want to do for that yet. What if I do like a star? What if I chuck a star on like T3 above the orbs? <laughs> Ah, oh, look, it looks goofy, but I like it. Yeah, I'll run with that. <laughs> and then something else I do kind of want to do as well is some form of connector deco, of course, as always. Are there any, like, pixel art connector deco? Like, it would be really cool to have some form of, like, pixel art connector deco, but I don't think it exists. I don't know, pixel art, I feel like, isn't meant to be used in the context of, like, a classic GD level, but I'm going to try because using things in ways that they're not supposed to be used... That's how to make a good level sometimes. Here are these. Yeah, that works as connector deco. Yeah, screw it. Let's use that. Okay. So this can kind of come up like that, go across, and then I guess I'll connect it with one of these. Yeah, all right. I dig that. I like that. Let's do that for everything else, I guess. Ooh, and then there's also even this little connector bit down the bottom. Ooh, I like that. That's cool as. I, I really like that. Okay. And I need something here to fill the space, so I'll chuck a little arrow with like another arrow overlaid on top of it. Now we've got a little arrow in there. That's that's cool. <laughs> Might reuse that arrow a little bit, actually. I made the design. I can use it wherever I like. Thank you very much. Nice. Well, this is looking quite cool. I really like this connector deco. I think it really brings it together. All right, now some portal deco, which for this, I want to do these pulsing ones. I know that. Maybe I'll just take this, scale it up, make it the background blending, and then copy, paste, and rotate it a little bit. Boom, like that. Maybe make that one a little bit darker and make this one a little bit darker as well, but not quite as darker. And scale one of them down a little bit so it's kind of inside of each other. Yeah. And then, I don't know, big circle that has 32. And then I'll scale that down. And then maybe scale it up so it's still inside. So it creates a bit of an overlapping effect. Yeah, this part's coming together really nicely. I'm really, really happy with that so far. Okay. So now this. How do I create an effect with this? I want to make it clear that the wave has to go through there. Okay, I have an idea for an effect. It might be a little bit messy. So I'm going to go to like layer 10 or something here, right? First of all, I want to create some outlines along here, like so, that'll go 
like the whole length of the screen. And I might actually make that the color of 32, the like that pulsing color. And then maybe I'll even just go as simple as like filling it out with some slopes like this. And then going back to this animator tab and chucking some lightning in there, but like the new fancy lightning. Yeah, like that. Rotate it 45 degrees and then make that 32 and 32 as well, I guess. Maybe can I make the inside like white? Yeah, so like that. So let's apply that to the top bit as well. Make sure all of this is laid on T4 above literally everything. And then on top of that, I want to go to the next layer and I want to darken everything else. So I'm going to use, I guess, these slopes here. Okay, so you can see that like goes on top of everything. Then I'll chuck that on there as well. So I want this 35 to not be full opacity. Like I want it to just darken everything, not like hide it completely. So something along the lines of that maybe. And then maybe I can even have them instead of just fade in, I'll have them move in. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'm happy with that. I've been tweaking and fiddling with this for like ages to try and get that transition to feel right. It feels okay, not like amazing, but it's good enough. I would kind of like some form of visual indicator that it's gonna go there. Maybe I can just like pulse on something and then pulse it off. Yeah, that's kind of like a good warning, I think. Okay, boom. Well, then that's that part pretty much done. Oh, I also added these arrows in here to kind of indicate that you need to go up that way. But other than that, yeah, I think that's that pretty much done. Now I want to, I guess, continue what we've already done in the first section up until here, right? All right, so I've continued that design up until about here where these structures start to come in. And that's because it's design time. I need to figure out what I want to do with these structures here. I need something connecting up here and then some form of like probably a pretty bright block at the end there. I would like to do something that rotates maybe. What would this look like rotating? What if I chuck one of these guys inside that? <laughs> That's really stupid, but it could work. If I set that to be the yellow color, as that rotates around, that'll like... Or even have this guy rotate around. Okay, you know what? I like that idea more. Having this guy rotate around the middle. We need something else in there to fill it up then. Um, do I want to do a pixel block? Yeah, that's kind of awesome. And then give that like some form of like a pulsing low type thing. <laughs> that's kind of awesome. I kind of love that. All right, let's give this guy the rotating group, which I think is like two. <laughs> the little guy. That's like genuinely one of the greatest things I've ever designed in this game ever. I love that so much. Okay, now I need to do a design for this. I was tempted to do these slopes, but the problem with these is that you can see the corners look a bit weird. And then I had a thought, what if I just take this, right? And then just warp it. That looks kind of interesting. That does dig into that design a little bit, but honestly, that's not the worst thing in the world. Like, I think that's all right. And I want that to be not quite background blending, but some other unique color, if you will, uh, a different background blending blending. Oh, is that like opposite? That's really cool, but oh, that's a bit too much for that. Maybe I will just make that background blending, but then also put something over the top of it. Or even instead of doing that, I'll use one of these slopes that is like, yeah, but I don't really love how that looks. That's kind of crazy with that coloring. I like that. And then what if I even take the same thing and flip it round so it's like that? I can't decide whether I like it or not. I kind of do. I think I like it. It's just a bit intense is the only thing. It's like, super, super intense. So maybe what I can do is just lower the brightness and even lower the saturation a bit as well. So it's still there. Like the effect is still there, but it's not as intense. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And then maybe to finish it off, I'll add some glow over the top that's also that color. Yeah, you know what? That's cool. I like it. Okay, cool. Let's apply that to, I guess, the rest of these here then. Oh, there's quite a few of them. <laughs> That's good, that's good, okay. <laughs> now I need to come up with a design for these three wide structures. These guys with a face, I wanna use probably a fairly similar design to what I do for these three wide ones. So I wanna make sure that I can incorporate a face into whatever the three wide ones are. Hmm, I kinda of like this combo where the top bit is this like hue shifted one and then the bottom is that. Like I kinda of think that works quite well with some of these pulses, right? Will that work for like this though? Like will it look kinda of goofy? Yeah. Maybe I'll try and design this guy first. Yeah, let's try and do that. So what I am thinking for this, I wanna use like these blocks. Maybe I could just do that. That'll be fine. And then I'll make the detail like something really vibrant. Mm, not quite the effect I'm going for. Maybe it'll look better if I use the solid ones. And then maybe chuck some glow over the top of it as well. We need quarter spacing up in this. Yeah, that's pretty much the effect I wanted. I think that's cool. Okay. And then for the background of these, hmm, I'm going to start by making those outlines black because I think that looks a little bit nicer. And then something I kind of want to try. I don't know if this is going to work. I have no idea. But I want to 
to try doing like a block gradient type thing. So I'll start up the top here and I'll just make that like copy the color of the background. Mm, and that's a little bit dark. So I'll make that like a bit brighter, a bit more saturated type thing. Mm. Then if I copy paste that down and then shift the hue just a little bit and then copy paste it down, shift the hue just a little bit. Oh, that's a lot. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I want to do a big... Or even I guess the gradient trigger would work for this, eh? Yeah, oh, yeah. Let me create a gradient here. The gradient trigger in question that literally exists for this exact purpose. Okay. I already showed you how I set one of those up earlier in the video. So let me just set one up real quick. Yeah, dude, check it out. That's really cool, actually. How it's like, it's kind of freaking out a little bit. But that's okay because I can probably tone that down a little bit. Maybe on the edges here, I want to create like, I guess, a bit of a black border around that. So do I want to do that with an outline or with something a bit thicker than an outline? Even literally just like these that are black, black like so. And then just make them border the whole structure like this, just to make it like feel a little bit more fitting in, I guess. Yeah, I kind of like that, honestly. These blending bits look a little bit weird now. I kind of want to try and do these insides to copy the color of 32, but not blending. Yeah, that's pretty much how I want it to be. I like that. Just considering how complicated and like messy a lot of these blocks are. I want to create a more simple one right there. And I think that works quite well. If I do say so myself, I mean, you know. I think I'm just going to keep these spikes how they are with like the fake spikes and all that. And then this fire. Oh man, what am I going to do with this fire? I guess just the same, maybe copy paste it and then lower the brightness a bit. Yeah, it's kind of a weird effect, but it kind of works. I kind of like that. All right, let's apply that to this guy as well then. Okay, now something that I really want to do is if we just like play through this part real quick. You'll notice that the cube kind of jumps really high there and there's nothing here. And I've purposely not put anything there because I want to make these spikes jump up to kind of follow the cube's path. And I wonder, can I do that with an area move trigger? Can I do it relative to the position of the cube? No, I don't think I can like move it towards the player. So I'd have to manually do these movements here, but that's okay. That's all right. So how far do I want them to each move up then? About that far per spike, I think. All right, so now I just need to go down the chain of like 286, move that by five on the Y and then I'll do that like I guess point one and then give that a sign out so it kind of goes and then it'll fall down I don't know let's just apply that to the rest of them and let's see if we can like make this work <laughs> oh it's so it's so goofy but uh, it doesn't quite work how I want it to Alright, I think that effect works. It's a little bit weird, a little bit goofy, a little bit silly. And now for these three wide structures. I I don't really want to do the exact same thing as these because I want these to be used later on over in these ones as well. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work, but we'll figure that out. That's fine. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to do for these yet, but I've just come up with an idea for these structures here that I think could be really cool. So I'm going to take... Oh, do I want to do it with spikes? That could cause hitbox. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're in 2.2. Hitbox issues don't matter. So I'm going to make that object and ideally object color as well. Can I like copy that? I guess I'll just do white and white. Sure. And then I'll copy paste that and then scale it down a little bit. You, you can't see it. But I want to make that a non-blending color in the middle. So like, I guess copying the color of the background and scale that up to like cover a little bit more of that. Yeah, something like that. And then I can kind of half space that down like so. And then just kind of create a pattern a little bit like this, as you can see. And then what I can do with that is I can give these the different pulsing groups that we gave earlier to these things going around, but do them a bit more randomly. So that's 263, 263 three and then give that to like a couple other well no yes yeah, so you can kind of see that effect there i think that's kind of neat i feel like it would look better if it was different colors though instead of pulsing to white because the white kind of mellows it out a little bit i don't really love that if it pulsed to like the opposite color or something that would be quite nice do we have a pulse like that for any of these okay so i'm just going to set up new groups for this i think um and that i want to do like a 0.1 fade in 0.2 fade out maybe and then you know what let me just do this to like background change the hue 180. Why not? <laughs> and then once I've got all those in place, I can just select those, click build helper, and then that'll give those new groups. So they only pulse with those. And it looks a little bit weird, but the background color is also very weird. It's very red. Maybe I'll keep it as being red and then just kind of pulse it to be more orange. Yeah. So I set up a bunch of pulses for the background, trying to avoid my previous issue of building the whole part and then realizing I have no background pulses. <laughs> and then just pretty much tweaked around with the colors and pulses of these diamond objects 
specs here until I got it looking decent. It actually took a really long time to get it how I liked, but the way I did it is I made the outline black instead of white and then made the pulses just be the opposite of whatever they are originally. And then shifting just a few of them around to like change the hue a little bit. And then I even made some of them completely gray. And with that, I took a little bit of inspiration from Cybernetic Crescent actually with this part here. Okay, so I thought it was Cybernetic, but I just played the part that I thought it was in and it's not. <laughs> then I thought it was in Toe 4 and then I played that part and it wasn't in there either. So honestly, I don't know where I got the idea to add gray from, but anyway, it's there and I think it's cool. Anyway, after I was happy with that design, I decided to apply it to the next part as well. <laughs> nice. It's a bit weird. It's a bit like goofy and doesn't look great on its own, but I think in context with everything else, I think it'll look good. Before I build everything else in this part though, I need to stop getting distracted because that was a distraction. I need to design these parts. <laughs> I think instead of designing these ones, I'm going to design these ones. Okay, so I've just done something with bricks for this guy and mm, it's like, okay, it's half decent. You know, I don't mind it. I think maybe what we could possibly do is a very big possibly. I don't know, but maybe like create a light streak in the middle of him. Like that type of thing, just to brighten it all up a little bit. So make that T3. That is way too bright. So I need to brighten us down that guy. But like, yeah, so that creates a bit more of like an interesting effect there. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And then I can probably go ahead and chuck like, a rotating object behind him that kind of just rotates with some form of color. I don't know, man. I'm just going to do background blending, but just like not as bright, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So here's just an update of where we're at right now. This first part up until about here is complete. I'm going to call this completely done. I'm very happy with how that part's turned out. This next part with the slopey bits is almost done. It just needs a couple more things, including the three wide structures. I'm going to get to that soon. Along with connected deco, and I want to add a custom background and maybe one in this first part as well. I don't know. And then this next dual wave needs a decent bit more work, but not too much more like block design wise. And then we have this last part, which is almost entirely not done, but I want to reuse a lot of designs for this. So not to worry. Uh, anyway, before we move on to that, I'm going to design these three wide structures. It's finally time. <laughs> So what I'm almost thinking is kind of combining this design with this design over here, kind of making a halfway point. And the way that I want to do that is by using these bricks here, right? And kind of making, do I want to do like an actual just full on outline with them? I don't know if I want to do an outline necessarily, but maybe even something like this where it kind of goes down the side like so. And then what I can do is take this gradient and copy paste it in there as well. Okay, that's odd, but it could work. It could work. Then what happens if I grab the design we had before, which was this guy here, and then kind of chuck that over the top of that? Does that look really weird? Yeah. Maybe I could get away with doing something with these in the center. If I half space that out there and then copy paste that down the middle there. Oh God. My S key cap has kind of broken. So my S key keeps falling off every time I hit it. <laughs> um, I want to make sure those are below, but yes, that actually looks really, really cool. Like that. Oh yeah. I like that. The gradient behind makes it look really cool. The pulses. And then as one last little detail, I'll add some glow over the top of these bricks as well that are just background blending, just to make them blend in a little bit nicer with everything else. And then also lower the brightness a little bit like so. And yeah, I think that looks quite nice. Okay, I've just copy pasted these around and now I'm on a gradient trigger hunt. Okay, there's a couple more. <laughs> cool, all right. So I also applied it to this little guy down here and I just doubled up the design. And I think that looks really nice. I'm really happy with how vibrant this part's looking. But of course, it's still not quite done done because we're missing a couple things. First things first, I think I want to take these arrows here and then kind of make an arrow design that follows the path that you take there. So let's just get the playtest lines. Boom, just like so. And then I can kind of take these arrows and space them out across there. Yep, there we go. And I also kind of want to do some form of effect with spikes coming down up the top here. So let me just knock something together here real quick with just like a spike there and then some form of thing connecting it. Maybe I can even use these because they're like, the oh yes. And then I can, okay, 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 okay. This guy, I can put that guy on the spike and then that, yeah, that looks nice actually. I like that. Something a bit like that. And then I'll have them move down. And this I'm pretty sure I can do with an area move trigger. So I'm going to select all those, give them a group and then shift them up by like one, two, three. Area move. I want them to move down by four, depending on the player position and then select the group I just gave them. Change that to this one or it might be this one, but I think it's that one. I don't know. And then I'll make the length just like, I don't know, 30 or something and then ease in out or maybe even sign in out. 
You can't even really see them, which is kind of a shame. Maybe I can make this move up. Yeah, okay. That, it's like a little bit goofy, but again, the goofy level, it makes sense. I kind of like that. I think that's good. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So that's that part done. I don't have to worry about like decorating that more. But for the rest of this part, I do want to add some connected deco in here. And I think I'll probably just go with the same. Honestly, tried and true. It works. Now it looks like this guy's just wearing a funny hat and his arms are like coming out like this. I almost like that more. All right, tell me guys, what's your head cannon? Is he holding up this platform or uh, is he holding these structures here? And he's just wearing a funny hat. Let me know. All right, so I've added in all of the connector deco for this part, and it's very close to done, but I think there's just a couple more things I want to do. And by a couple, I mean one, and that is to try and incorporate more of these type sections, because we only have two of them. We have one here, and we have one here. Literally not a single other one. So I feel like I need at least one more section a little bit like that. I just don't really know where to put it, to be honest. Maybe instead of this arrow being here, I can chuck one here. All right, so I went ahead and added one of those over here and I also went ahead and added one here just above this little saw blade fireball thing and I think that makes it like blend in a little bit better it adds to it a little bit more I had to remove a bit of connected deco I did put here but that's okay that's all right because now the rest of the parts feeling very nice very in theme with the first part as well which is nice and then we get into this part which is just like not even close to done but that's all right because we're making progress we're making plenty of progress all right I'm gonna call this part done for now I do want to come back and do a custom background at some some point, but not yet. Because before I do that, I want to move on to this part here because I have an idea that I actually got from a comment on the previous video. Hopefully it's on screen. I'm pretty sure I took a screenshot of it. So the first thing I want to do is actually remove these lines here. And now you can see just the hitboxes are left behind. Um, so now I want to go to layer one here and chuck down some electricity. Yeah. What if I even did like just the 2.1 electricity? Let's just do like three long of that and then chuck those on the ends just like so. Rotate 45. Oh my god, that is the perfect length. I'll make the inside maybe even like 32 color, so it goes between green and yellow. I'll actually do both of them with this color, and then make the base, or the detail rather, of this a little bit darker. So yeah, you can see it just stands out a bit better. And that's kind of cool. There's some more effects I do want to add to this, but for now, I think that's fine. <laughs> it does look stupid, but it's fine. It looks like okay. it's okay. It's all right. But does it need more? Yeah, absolutely. This has to stay thin in the decoration because otherwise it would look like it has a bigger hitbox than it actually does. Like if I add extra slopes around here, I don't really want to do something like that because that'll make it look a bit thicker than it actually is. But I guess honestly, it could probably work. And those slopes were just a dumb example, but... Yeah, do something like that that kind of accentuates that coloring in the middle and makes it feel a little bit more full. I've lowered the brightness of this a lot, but I want to lower it even more just to make that stand out a bit more. Yeah, I like that. And then if I kind of continue that along the whole thing like so, I can have some like semi background deco to kind of reinforce that. Check it out. That looks really cool, actually. I, I like that. And then I can probably continue this down like so all the way to the floor. And then it would be cool to have some like arms kind of coming off of these structures here and then connecting to this middle slope bit. How would one pull that off? What if I use some, oh, this is going to be weird. If I use this and then what does that look like if I warp it down like that? If I do something like that, Oh, yeah. It's pretty strange, but again, gimmick le gimmick level. Yeah, this is the gimmick level, guys. The gimmick level has returned. Oh my god. But yeah, look at that. Dude, that's so weird, but so cool. I really, really like those lines through there. I think that looks super cool. Let's see that in normal mode. Not what I expected to be making, but I think that looks really cool. Oh, I'm so happy with that. So that's that kind of more or less done. Now I want to add some ground spikes in this area because I actually don't have this set to free mode. If you just like play this section in normal mode, you can see there's actually boundaries there. So it's not like free fly mode or whatever. And so I want to add some ground spikes because everyone loves ground spikes. Ground spikes, my beloved, the old GS. And for the ground spikes, I don't know. I haven't done ground spikes in a little while for this level. I'm not going to lie, but I'll chuck the those down there. Just have this as a baseline that goes across like so. Have a few of these sticking out from it, of course, because honestly, bushes are like so overpowered when it comes to deco. They're kind of underrated. People don't use bushes enough anymore, man. They're good. And then what if I did like question marks sticking out of the ground that are like background blending and then just like have them kind of just sticking out like so? I think it could kind of work, maybe an upside down one. And if we hop in normal mode, they'll actually pulse with the music as well, which is cool. 
or not, I guess. Why aren't they pulsing, really? If I select this and then go to extra, like there's no, no pulse, whatever, like no effects, that's not on, no audio scale, yeah, that's off as well. Okay, well anyway, um, there's one more thing I wanna do in these ground spikes and that's adding some form of rotating object in there. Maybe just like some of these guys. Or I feel like it needs to be a little bit more like triangly, considering all of the triangles in this part, right? I could probably just do like some of these even. I'll speed them up as well, so they're like 360. That's not that fast. Yeah, like that. Like, that's nice and quick. And because they're not there all the time, I'm gonna, like, be pretty, pretty lenient with how many I put around. Like, I'll put quite a few of them around for what they are, you know? And yeah, I think that's cool. All right, let's do that on the top as well, then. Yes, I love those ground spikes there, dude. Like, it's all in the sky, and then boom, ground spikes right there. I think that adds to it a lot. All right, and then for this design in here, I think... I think I'm probably just gonna do the rainbow blocks. Yeah, I don't want to have like all new designs for absolutely everything, you know, because that would get a little bit annoying, I'd imagine. I did want to do a custom background for this part, but now I kind of don't want to with how much design is in the background there. So maybe I can do some form of design to go through this section as well. A lot to live up to though, man. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Ooh, something I've just discovered is look at this star when I rotate it. This is rotating by 90 degrees and it just kind of shifts around like that. I do like that. If I give that at the rotating group. Uh, I don't love having stuff just floating there though. Maybe I can like scale that up and chuck it behind some of these structures and then do that and then like that or something. Does that like rotate around how I think? Think it would kind of not really but also it kind of works i kind of like it it's a little bit too obtrusive so i'll like make the brightness a bit lower but i can chuck those kind of around the place like maybe have one that kind of hooks around like so perhaps it looks interesting it looks a little bit all over the place but i kind of like it i think that's good i'm gonna keep that and then i need to do something for this which Hmm. If I, first of all, maybe build up these sides with just black blocks like so, and then I'll do that on the other side. And then I'll copy paste that. <laughs> I'll copy paste that. And then maybe make that not background blending, but I guess like 32, like the bright color like that to kind of create a bit of a border there. And then I want to have pulsing colors that brr, brr, when you like go through this part here. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So let's go to the next layer and I'll keep using half blocks for this. And I want that to be seven by default, but then I'll give that a group, then just kind of copy paste it down, new group, copy paste it down, new group, etc. Okay, and then now that I've got all of these, I'm gonna make some pulse triggers real quick that just pulse down those groups. You kind of see how that works. But instead of doing them just white like that, I wanna do them some more interesting and unique colors, perhaps. I do like that, but I think that's a little bit simple. Like you kind of, you're going through this section and then these side bits have absolutely nothing going on. So I feel like I need at least something there, right? Maybe I can do some of these guys that are on T3, something like that. Kind of see how that fills out that space a little bit better. And I'll have a background blending by default, but then give that like one of the groups. And then I can kind of copy paste that down there and then give that like 325 and then copy paste it like there. So you can see it kind of like, it kind of goes all over the place there. I like that. I think that's a cool little effect that'll help fill in that space a little bit better as well. Nice little one-off design. I don't like doing that super often, but every now and then I'll do a one-off design. Why not? That kind of looks cool. I like that a lot. And then I'll do something in the middle that like, I don't know. That, oh, dude, I didn't know the little ghost was a thing. There's also that. Oh, dude, there's so many like cool little icons in here that I didn't know were a thing. I could do like an eye even. You can see as you enter there, but then yeah, I'll make some more that are like black blending by default, but then they like have some of the groups in here and they kind of like go all over the place like, you know, the other design. Nice, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's, that's kind of goofy, kind of goofy silly, but I think it's cool. Okay, well with that, we are moving on to this part here, the final part. Oh, it's been a long video of a lot of decoration, but I've been enjoying it, I've been liking it, it's been good. And now we're on more or less the home stretch. I still want to do a custom background in this first part, but we'll get to that, we'll get to that. First of all, the block designs in this part, which I think for the most part, I'm just going to be reusing stuff that we've already made. Like we came up with the design for this little guy here, and there's a lot of those kind of structures 
structures around the place that I'm going to use them in. And these slopey structures, I think I want to use a similar design to this. And then these pillars, I want to use the same pillar design we see here, more or less. Maybe chucking these at the top. Mm, yeah, okay. Let's try the pillar design first then, because I have a bit of a more interesting idea for that. Just chucking these at the top and then putting the rainbow blocks below. But still, more interesting than not. All right, boom. Well, there is those pillar designs in place. And I think, yeah, for the rest of these, I'm just going to be reusing all of the stuff that we've made previously for the block design itself. So let's do that real quick then. All right, so I've gone ahead and added all of the block design in here and it's, you know, it's coming together. You can see all of this in here, you know, it's there, it exists. Uh, I think it definitely needs a little bit more though. I think the first thing I kind of want to do is I want to make these guys move into place and I'm not 100% sure what kind of effect I want to do for that. Probably just a movement, but I'm kind of tempted to do the laser blitz thing where they kind of move into place and they have like a trail behind them. I kind of want to do something like that. So let me take this guy here and and then I'm going to recreate him just out of blocks like this. And I want to make that its own color and give that, I guess, could be the color of the background. A little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more saturated type thing. Sure. And then that'll be on like B3 maybe. So that'll go behind and you shouldn't be able to see the... Ugh. Okay, those poke through a little bit. I'm going to have to fix that. Hang on. That kind of looks crazy, but I, I do like that. I think that works a lot better. Cool. And then this should go behind all of that. And then, yeah, you can't even see it. Cool. So let's link that together. Copy, paste it. Go down a Z or a layer so it goes behind and then I'll shift the color to be like hue maybe plus 15 so you can see that's like a bit of a different hue yeah and then I'll do that one more time cool so now we got all of those what I'm going to do is unlink this guy I'm going to chuck just an object in the middle of him okay so I was originally going to do a follow trigger for these guys until I realized it was a lot easier just to make multiple move triggers I don't know I guess 351 which is this guy the actual block dude I'll move him by negative 50 maybe and then I might just do that as an ease out and then I'll copy paste that increase the group copy paste that increase the group and then just like that so now those should follow behind it yeah that happens way too slow though <laughs> yes I do like that I need to adjust the colors a bit though yeah, I like that effect. I think that's kind of neat. All right, so I got all of those in place. And honestly, I think it adds a lot to the part. I really like as well how you can see the rainbow trail when they leave. I think that's awesome. Something I do want to do though is have some form of an indicator of like where it's going to go, you know? Because at the moment they kind of fly in, they fly out. And in the empty space between that, it looks a little bit goofy. I'm not going to lie. So maybe I can do some form of like a boof where it like pulses to where it's going to go. What if I do some invisible blocks like this, right? that kind of go around the edges here. And then I can scale these down to half size to like indicate the little eyeballs, right? Let me get that nice and lined up and then I can rotate that and line that up. Cool, so that's like one eyeball lined up and then I can grab another one and just half space it over there and then just get a few of them for the mouth and then I can even just delete these inner bits to like make it like that. <laughs> so it's like a dotted outline of where it's gonna be. That's kind of awesome actually. And it would also be cool to do some like spikes like that and then I guess warp it vertically, but I don't even need to do that. I could probably just do that with this, right? Now, obviously this has a hitbox, but again, no touch. God, I love 2.2. And then if I make sure glow is off, which I do want to turn glow off for like all of this, and you should be able to see that coming up, right? <laughs> That's kind of awesome, actually. Yeah, I really like that. That's a really nice indicator. Okay, yep. All right, so let's just do a similar thing for all of the other ones then, I guess. Yeah, I really like the indication that gives. It makes it feel more satisfying as well for some reason when it, like, actually fills up those gaps. I really, really like that. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, now I think I just want to do a background pretty much, yeah. I could do some connected deco, but I don't really want to do that too much because I have these guys moving in and out. I'd rather just do a decent background and then call it a day there. So let's go to layer five. I think there's nothing on. And let's try and come up with a background here. I think I would like to expand on the theme of these guys moving around. So maybe I could do some like shifting blocks that have different color trails perhaps. So if I grab like a two by two block here and I'll make that a lot darker, but I do want it to be like background blending pretty much. Make that a lot darker actually, because I want to copy paste it a couple times as well. So maybe one, two like that. And then yeah, that'll add together to be like that. Cool. Link that together. And then I want to give that a group of 
of 383, copy paste, new group, copy paste, new group. And then I want to move those groups downwards. It might look a little bit messy, but I kind of am all right with that. Now I want to take some more blocks here and then go, I guess behind that, so this needs to be B4. I'll put these on a new layer because I want this to be like, I guess actors kind of tracks for it. So let's go a color that copies the color of the background, but isn't completely dark. That's like bright, maybe like that. Yeah. And then that can kind of, I guess, fill out the track for where I want this thing to go. So we'll just go there and then it goes around in a circle like so. And then you know what? Screw it. I'm going to select these out of it. I'm going to copy paste them. And then I'm going to make that 32, which is the like super bright blending color. Scale that up a little bit to give that a bit of a border. At what point is it obvious that it's a background? I think that's kind of obvious that it's a background. Yeah. But then what I'll do is I'll select these inner ones as well and do the same thing. Mm, it doesn't quite give the effect I'm looking for. I don't really love that. First of all, the movements need to be a little bit closer together, but also the way the blending works just doesn't look that good, I don't think. It looks a little bit all over the place, so I think I need to make the one in the foreground solid. With this trail, it looks a little bit messy, so I might even just delete the trail, just get rid of it. Yeah, I kind of like how it just kind of moves around in a circle, honestly. I think that's fine. So let me select that, select that, and then just kind of copy paste those around like this. Cool, and I think... I think I want to stagger some of these a little bit as well. So if I select these and then do them like at very different times, like so, just give them a little bit of randomization, you know, because I feel like it would look a lot better with a bit more variation. They're going at like completely different times with the rotations. I think that makes it look a lot more interesting. I like that. And then one last little effect I want to do for this part is I kind of want to go to a new layer here and do some ground spikes that kind of move up and wave with the player, I think would be really, really cool. So if I just grab, say, these ones here, I'm going to scale that up to two times, maybe even go a little bit smaller so that when I go two blocks ahead, yeah, they're a little bit separate like this. I want to make them a bright blending color, maybe even like the weird opposite color, 22, this one. Then grab a square and then scale that to be the same size, just like that. Yeah. And then what I can do is I can give them all a group of 387 and then just use an area move trigger. And then I'll put that on T4. I'll do a decently big length of like, I don't know, eight blocks or something, or even like 10 blocks, right? And it'll move only by about 20. I think that would probably be good. I want to ease in and out because I set the length to 10. Yeah, so you can kind of see how that works, right? I think that's cool. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that, again, you can't collide with that. And then I also kind of want to move it to the left. So if I do 387, yeah, that is pretty much the exact effect I'm looking for, yeah. I don't like how it's blending, though. It kind of collides with everything. Like, it, it overrides. It just looks weird. So I want to do that as a non-blending color. Maybe this one that copies 32 like that. That's pretty nice and bright. And then I'll add some glow over the top as well well. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a really, really cool effect. There is one more thing I do want to do though. I want to create a bit of a shadow behind these. So I'll scale that up to two times and then chuck that like T3. So it's just behind. Yeah, that makes it look a lot more separate. That's nice. I do like that. Okay. Hell yeah. Cool. 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 All right. That's awesome. Um, I think I think I'm going to call that part complete then. Yeah. Now I did want to do a custom background in this part, but this video is getting so unbelievably long and I also have no ideas for it. So I think I'm going to leave that to either the next episode or off camera. Um, but yeah, I think for now I'm probably going to go ahead and even in this off. I know I haven't done this transition bit, but I'll do this between episodes as well. Um, kind of running out of time to finish this video. It's already late and I don't want to like keep you guys waiting for a whole nother week. So I, yeah, I need to do the showcase before I just end it off, don't I? All right, let's do, let's do a showcase. Showcase.
Nice. Okay, yeah. Had to do a no clip run because this level is impossible and I also want to actually have a difficult verification time. It's always anticlimactic when I'm like, okay, time to verify and then I spend like 10 minutes and verify it. Yeah, I think this is going to take me a little bit longer. Oh my. This level is certainly taking me quite a long time and this video was definitely long. I probably took on a little bit too much to decorate today. But yeah, either way, that is the entire drop of what the base completes. That is a good chunk of the level actually. Hang on. We have 46 seconds done. Yeah, we are actually very, very close to being done. I just need this part in here to do and this part in here, which I have some very interesting ideas for what I want to do for those. But yeah, for now, I think I'm going to finally go ahead and end off today's episode of What The Base. Hope you enjoyed it. Very long one. And huge thank you to all the members, of course, as always, especially Infdu. Really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Oh, yeah.